would not be called for the, the survey, right? And if he's in your population, then he had, we'd have to have an equal chance. That wouldn't be random. What I'm talking about right here is the first way of sampling. It's called a convenience sample because you do what's easiest. However, this is not a random type of sampling. If I go outside and just start asking people what's their favorite movie, all I'm getting is Merced College students between the hours of 10 and 11. I'm not getting the person out in Merced who doesn't go to this college, who's not on campus between 10 and 11. It's not random if Merced is my population. Does that make sense to you? Okay, so the first one, we, we never use this one, but if you had no statistical background, this is probably what you would do. If you ever took a, a survey in high school, this is probably what you did. You just thought you were being random, but you just asked people on the street uh, that were in high school. This is called a convenience sample. And pretty much in, in the simplest terms I can think of, this is really you just use the results that are easy to get. Chances are this thing is not going to be random. And therefore, it's really never used in a realistic uh, statistical basis of uh, conducting an experiment, observation, collecting samples. The other ones are, though. The next one is called a systematic. So this is number one. Number two, it's called systematic sampling. Here's how systematic sampling works. Systematic means you're, you're doing things in a certain order. You understand how systematic kind of works out, right? So here's how, what you would do for systematic. You would take your entire population and you would assign every person a number. So you'd say, you're number one, and you're number two, you're number three, four, five, and every single person in, if this was our population, would get a number out of this. Then what you do is you pick like a random number like 1 through 5, 1 through 6, depending on how large your population is, 1 through 100, if it's really, really big. And what you would do is start at a random spot on your list and pick every kth person. K-T is like kth. Like you'd pick, I'd start with the second person and pick every third person. So I'm starting with uh, Cassie and then I go, uh, she's number 2, so 1, 2, 3, I'm going to pick the 5th one, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to pick the 8th one, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to pick the 11th one. And you pick all of those people. Do you see that, that I have, I don't even know who the people are, right? They're just in some list. I don't know who I'm going to pick ahead of time. I'm just going to pick every third person. Do you see how that's completely random? That's not identifying anybody as this person's going to be in. It's not excluding anybody, right? Because all your whole population was there. It just so happened randomly that you're picking the third person or the fifth person. That's a random way of sampling. So let me write this out for you again. You're going to put your your population in some numerical order. So you're going to have, give every person a number basically. So divide, I'm oh, sorry, put a population in order and select every kth member. That's K, K T H, like fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth, thirteenth. Well, it wouldn't work for three, it'd be third, fifth, that's what it would. But you know, it would be third in that case. In every K, that was funny. <laughs> So this one, you would start at a random spot. I don't have that on there. You start at a random spot on your list, and then you pick every cave member. You guys have any questions about these two first off? The convenience sample, 
for the, uh, the systematic sampling? Do you kind of get the systematic sampling? Do you get why it's random? How it's not really signifying any group at all? It's not really signifying any person? It's just it's completely random. Okay, the next one we have gets a little bit more, more precise. Next one is a stratified sample. Heard of the the key word in there? What's the key word in stratified? You can say it. It's right there. Strata. Have you ever heard of the stratosphere? What's the stratosphere? I don't even know. I'm asking you honestly. What is a stratosphere? Well, if you ever heard about a stratosphere, you know that a stratosphere is broken up into layers, layers of the stratosphere. Have you ever heard that before? If you haven't heard that before, let me tell you something about our atmosphere. We have an atmosphere, and it's broken up into like layers of, of atmosphere, and strata layers, and it's some cases they're called. <clears throat> I wish I knew more about that, because it's kind of interesting in all the clouds. Is he taking that class, like the cloud class, that cloud cat class or something? You learned about something? <laughs> well, anyway. The atmosphere is broken up into layers, and strata means layers. A stratified sample is this. It happens when you want to identify and have people from each layer in your population. For instance, if I was doing a survey, I certainly want it to be random. But maybe I'm looking for certain subgroups to be in there. For instance, if I was taking like a, a poll again, I don't want it to be so random that I, I miss out on some groups. I want to make sure, make sure everybody's in there. For instance, if it's about uh, anything to do with, with race or something, you don't want to, you might not want to do systematic sampling because do you see if you put everyone in California on a list, you could potentially, alphabetically, you could potentially miss out on one complete segment of like a racial group or something. Do you see what I'm talking about? You could, because it's so random, you could miss every single person. A stratified sample takes care of that. A stratified sample says, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to break your population into groups by some characteristic. Say, okay, here are my uh, Hispanic uh, people, here are my Caucasian people, here are my African American people. And then what I'm going to do is pull some from here, pull some from here, and pull some from there. That way I make sure every group is represented. Now, depending on what you're, you're polling, you might have racial groups or uh, religious groups, or if you were doing scientific basis, you, were, you might have like uh, strains of bacteria to see what they're, they're doing. I mean, you could, you could bring this up in many different ways. Strata simply means layers. It means you're looking at the different groups and picking a random sample from each of those subgroups, thereby making sure that every subgroup is represented. How many people understood what I just talked about the strata? Okay, so let me write that out for you. With a stratified sample, again, we break our population into subgroups based on a characteristic and then take a random sample of each subgroup. So break that population into subgroups based on some characteristic and then take a simple random sample of each subgroup. Sorry, I know that's low on the board for you guys in the back. I thought this. Okay, so we got random, that means everybody's got equal chance of being selected. We got simple random, which means that every group of the same size has equal chance of being selected. And there's a few ways we can do that. Convenient sample is not one of them. The purple ones are good. The black one up here that, that's all black, no purple, 
it means we can't use that one, it's not random. This is just the stuff that's easy to get. Systematic sample, we put it in order, take every third or every fifth or every tenth item after starting at a random place. Stratified says we, we don't necessarily want to do this one, we want to have subgroups here. So we're going to break our population into subgroups and then sample each one. By the way, could you use this in conjunction with this one? Yeah, you could use a systematic on each of these subgroups. That's how you would do it. Now the last one we're going to talk about is similar at first glance with the stratified. It's called a cluster sample. Here's how a cluster sample works. A cluster sample, you're still breaking up your population into groups. So what I would do in a cluster sample is this. According to your seating arrangement, I would say, okay, um, every block of four people is a cluster. So four, 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 four. I would do that all across the room and break you all up into four group little clusters. Are you with me on this? Am I doing this by any characteristic? Am I grouping people the same hair color, or grouping genders, or grouping ethnicities? Am I doing that at all? In fact, I'm, I don't even care about that. So this is one way it differentiates between the stratified sample is this is based on characteristic. This is not going to be. This could be based on anything you choose. Uh, no numbers, just complete choosing groups of people. You could use zip codes if you wanted to, to do this, uh, or area codes if you were doing a telephone pool. You could do that. Then what you do is after breaking up your population into groups which have no characteristics that are similar or that not necessarily similar, what you're going to do is pick random numbers of clusters and pull everybody in that cluster. So it's not a simple random sample of the clusters, uh, like within the clusters, you pull everybody in that cluster, you're just picking the clusters randomly. So it's a little bit different than this one. Here's how it would work in this class. I would break up groups of four people all over the place, and I'd say, okay, I'm going to pick every other group of four. You, and then you, and then you, and I'd pull everybody in those four groups. It's still random. I haven't grouped you by any characteristic at all. I've randomly selected your groups, and then I'm pulling, I'm pulling, pulling everybody. Is that one okay with you guys as well? Do you see the difference between this one, the cluster, and the stratified? This is characteristics for each subgroup, and then you randomly sample each subgroup. This is no characteristics for the groups, then you randomly select the groups and pull everybody in those groups. Let me write that out for you, and if there's any questions, we can talk about that in a minute. So again, we're breaking up the population into groups, or clusters. I'll put on here in parentheses, this is regardless of any characteristic. You are not grouping by stratified, not no strata here. So divide the population into clusters regardless of characteristic. Then you're going to randomly select a certain number of clusters, like I showed you in class. I, I did a system.